All right, welcome back. In episode one, we covered exactly why we like the R5, uh, why what it's one of our favorite cameras to shoot right now. So the next logical question is the daunting task of what lens do I want? And now we have an entire port chart that'll tell you what ports you need for what lens if you already have one. But in this video, I really want to talk about the lenses that we really like and what we recommend. These are kind of our five star choices. Um, so, so camera body side, we have uh, the RF mount on the front. Um, and the three lenses of choice that I have right now would be the Canon EF 8 to 15 fisheye lens with the appropriate adapter so that you can mount it to the RF amount of the camera. The newer 14 to 35, so you have a zoom range, um, wide angle zoom. Um, and then of course, if you're shooting macro, the 100 millimeter. Now this is the new 100 RF 100 millimeter. Um, there is a pre-existing 100 millimeter image stabilization EF. And if you have that, that plus the adapter is an excellent choice. Uh, but if you don't have either, I would go with the newer version. Lens number one, the Canon 8 to 15 fisheye. Now, for those of you who have not shot underwater, initial instinct is often, uh, I don't really want to do fisheye shooting because I don't want that weird warpy image, uh, which I would agree with uh, for topside photography. If I was shooting in a city with parallel telephone poles and buildings, yeah, you're going to notice that warp and it's going to be a very niche lens for a topside photographer. But underwater, it's, it's the exact opposite. This is our workhorse. This is our go-to lens. Um, we don't have parallel lines underwater. We don't have those things that we're used to seeing, so we don't have that perspective. Uh, so this lens lets us get very close to the subject, which is our effective range of strobe usage, um, and keeping everything in the frame. And it's going to be very crisp because it's a fisheye lens behind a dome from edge to edge, which is something you don't necessarily find with a rectilinear lens. We'll get more into that later. But to just cover this lens, you're going to need this 8-15 millimeter fisheye lens, um, and the hood pops off and so does the shade, so, which is really good and it's critical because that lets us get very close to the dome. We have a 180 degree field of view at eight millimeters, so we need to get all the way up into the dome as we can. Um, and then with the RF mount, you're gonna need the adapter. So this, just like every other Canon lens, this will mount to this and you'll be able to use the two. So from here, let's go into how do I zoom this lens. This is our gear and clamp system. We'll dive more into this on the assembly side of things, but basically this clamps around the lens, this goes into the housings, and as this turns, it's going to zoom your lens. Now this will be applicable to no matter which port you go with, whether you go with the small dome port or whether you go with the larger dome port. Now let's talk about both of those for just a second. We have our small compact eight inch dome port and we have our full eight inch dome port. Now both of these dome ports are exactly the same piece of acrylic optical element this one just gets cut down. So you have literally the same piece cut down to a smaller form. The reason why you would want to choose this over this is this one has much less drag in the water. You still get crisp corner to corner images. Um, it's smaller to pack with if you choose just one um, and it lets you get in closer. So if you have a subject that you want to get and you want to tuck into a small spot, this one's going to let you, let you do that. I choose this for what I call general underwater photography, nine times out of 10. Um, and then I would choose this if I was doing dedicated over under shooting. Now we've designed these two port systems to be extremely lightweight. So and the reason being is I often will travel with both. So I have this and this, and I know what I'm about to go do before I go shoot it. If I'm gonna go shoot over unders, obviously I'm going with the bigger dome. If I'm doing general photography, then I do the smaller dome port. Both of them are very lightweight because of their acrylic elements. Not only do we have the advantage of weight, but now we can polish that element out. We have another video on that and on how to polish the dome port. Um, but if it were me and the budget allows, you can travel with both of these and I do recommend it. The next lens of choice is gonna be the Canon RF 14 to 35. Now this is a relatively newer lens, um, but it is going to be a rectilinear wide angle lens. So that rectilinear aspect of this lens is going to mean that your corners won't be as sharp as when you use that 8 to 15 that we previously mentioned. That being said, it's still a very good lens and it's very versatile because you have that zoom range from 
14 to 35. You may initially think, well, I have 14 millimeter field of view. Does that mean that it's similar to the 8 to 15 field of view? Well, keep in mind that one's a fisheye, one's rectilinear. So this is still very wide angle, but not as wide angle as the 8 to 15. This is a more versatile lens as a photographer because it's because you can use it topside. Um, you don't get the warped edges, so you can do a lot of landscape photography with this. So it may be a great choice for a lot of people, especially those who want to get into underwater photography and want to bring a lens with them. So as far as housing this lens, we have a, a gear drive system. Now this doesn't have a clamp for the lens, so this goes drops down in the housing and it interfaces directly friction fit around the zoom ring of the 14 to 35. We're going to get into that detail so you can see that closer in the next video. But from there, again, you can choose either the large dome port or the smaller dome port. Again, these are both the same exact piece of acrylic optical element. This one is just cut down for a smaller profile, much more maneuverable, easier to travel with. This one's larger, splits the water line, so you use this for over-unders primarily. I prefer this for general photography, but this for over-unders, and I would honestly travel with both because they're both designed to be very lightweight. Now in this particular lens's case, the same 50 millimeter extension that we have here can be paired with this dome port and accommodate the lens, or it can be paired with the larger dome port and accommodate the lens. Again, with, but with the same drive gear to zoom the lens. So the last of the three lenses that I take is the 100 millimeter macro. Uh, this lens is a lot of fun to shoot underwater because you're only using your strobes for the light So you don't have to factor in the sunlight or anything like that You can zoom in on those tiny little creatures. You can get a really good profile of a fish. You can get the eyeball of a fish um, It's a very simple uh, Lens to shoot and if you're just getting started and you're looking to to get some results you're excited about this would be the lens to go with um, two extensions and a flat port is all you're gonna need for this lens. Um, we're gonna go into that on the next video, but this one's as simple as it gets. If you have the old 100 millimeter, the old 100 millimeter, which is the EF image stabilization version, uh, you can use the adapter um, and a series of ports. But uh, if you don't have either and you're getting the Canon R5, go with the newer one. It just has a closer working distance. So just to do a quick recap, Obviously we have our Canon EOS R5, and then we have the Canon 8-15 fisheye with the adapter. We have the RF 14-35 for mid-range zoom, and we have the 100mm for macro. Again, going from really wide angle fisheye lenses, mid-range zoom wide angle, to 100mm macro small stuff. Uh, so stay tuned, we're going to go into the next video, how to put the camera in the housing, and how to put the ports together, the zoom gear sleeves, and then after that we'll go into lighting.